Jeff Little, Regional Pro Staff Director for Wilderness Systems Kayaks, and uh, we're here at Clapper Lake at Seneca Creek State Park um, doing a seminar today on, I'm going to cover striper fishing, rockfish out on the Chesapeake Bay, and I want to do a, about a stern on, on my boat, um, but we also have Dave Thompson here. He's going to cover fall patterns for reservoir largemouth and Jed Plunker. Uh, Pro staff for Wilderness Systems Kayaks and uh, a guide for Whitefly Outfitters out in uh, in Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. Let me show you why I have this particular boat uh, set up for striped bass. Uh, I think the first thing you'll notice is that it's a long, skinny boat, and that makes it a very fast boat. Um, it, it makes it so I can cover a lot of ground quickly. This is a Tarpon 160, 16 foot boat, very narrow. Um, and I'll just take you about a stern on, on the different accessories that I have. Um, sometimes, and I don't have it on here today, sometimes I have an anchor set up here and I will set up an, an, a uh, retractable anchor system. I don't have it here today, I, I put it on a different boat. Um, but moving back, I have, this is a, a depth finder, uh, that's a Ray Marine Dragonfly 7, and then the transducer arm here on this side. Um, a lot of times for for you know fishing, especially when you're jigging for the um, the rockfish out there, I'll I'll wait until I see them show up on this depth finder uh, before I drop a jig on them. Um, I also troll, and this is a a you know a rod holder set up for trolling, and I'll put two of them. I actually have a base right here, and I'll have a spread where I'll have you know probably a 15 or 16 foot spread that I will just troll back and forth. And the trolling really lets me um, determine where these fish are, are clustered up and, and usually I'll follow up and, and jig them after that. Uh, this is the, the controller for my Torquedo motor, which you can see at the back there. It actually steers, and I'm not, because it's pulled up, you can see that it's, it wants to move side to side, but uh, it, it's foot controlled so I can steer with my feet. Um, <clears throat> I just put a little bit of, uh, it's actually a pool noodle cut in half. So when I'm out there in, in rough seas and I got jig heads sliding around, I, I take these and I just shove them in there so my jig heads don't go down through the scupper holes. Um, I do keep a, uh, a pack. Sometimes it's a Yak Attack black pack. This one's an old precision pack, just somewhere to keep my gear so I can quickly turn around and, and restock with what I need. So that's my Tarpon 160 set up for, uh, for ch catching straight bass in the Chesapeake. So let's go over to, to Dave. He's going to talk about reservoir largemouth fishing with his, what boat do you got? I've got the Wilderness Systems Ride 115. And again, I'm Dave Thompson, weekend fishing addict. Um, the way I've got my ride set up is at the very front up here what I've got is a clip for that I use for my uh, anchor line this runs free I'll have a loop at the end coming up back here this will run back to just a clip right by my seat where I can pinch pinch so I'll get in, in heavy wind I'll generally anchor right off the, the front of the kayak Setup here is basically a dog retriever with a five pound weight. Let's not wind up in the lake here. Um, what I like about this is I can deploy this, drop it off the side of my kayak, and I'll just let it, you know, go down, hit the bottom, and then wrap it and I'll seal it off like this. And if I'm in current or something like that, I'm not attached to it yet. Um, I've had some incidents, you know. Attaching a kayak or uh, attaching the anchor line to the side of the kayak, you know, can cause cause some problems. So anyway, I can get this safely deployed, and then I'll paddle back up to it and hook up hook up to there, and then I can tighten this line as I need to, just to get it worth it. The, the nice thing about this is if I get snagged up, I can just disconnect from the anchor, get unsnagged, and come right back to my spot. Uh, the next thing I've got here is my hummingbird fish finder. 
I actually have my transducer puck through a scupper hole right now. It's got that down imaging puck, which seems to fit pretty well in the groove. It's down there. Um, I've got the new seat for the uh, the ride series that came out just, I guess, this year. Uh, and back here, I've got my my standard crate. This opens on a hinge. I can flip that shut. I've got four, or sorry, five rod holders back here. We're all generally put. On more power boats are I'll put a flag up there so that they can see me and I think that pretty much covers everything about my ride there we go how's it going I'm Jed Plunkert I'm a guide for white fly outfitters and uh, pro staff for wilderness systems kayaks <clears throat> what I have here is a wilderness systems ride 135 up front I have my anchor set up and I use a roller pulley just attached to a stainless steel carabiner and I like the eight pound mushroom anchor I feel like this gets snagged a whole lot less than uh, than anything with the prongs or or other anchor types and I've taken I've taken some of the silent traction material and put it here along with some like vinyl siding type stuff uh, that way when you do pull up you know it's not beating the heck out of the side of the plastic just to, just to quiet it down a little bit. And I've used that throughout the boat, actually, the silent traction. I put it on top of anywhere, like, a, anywhere you're gonna lay something, you know, the net, rods, anything that could make noise when it hits the boat. So I have that throughout. The anchor trolley runs, runs through the side here, through a little bit of a, a stainless steel eye, and then to a zigzag cleat where I control, you know, pulling it up and down. And then behind the seat, it has a retractable clothesline spool. So that keeps all the extra line really tidy, um, which comes in handy if you're fly fishing or like me and you have a bunch of junk all over the inside of your boat. But from, from there, I have my fish finder set up is on one side on a slide track system. And I like the transducer mount on the same side, just the same thing, just to tidy up the boat a little bit. Um, and keep it all you know pretty compact i can get to it pretty pretty easily and i have the same thing as jeff just a just a pool noodle just to keep some of the transducer mount or the wire cleaned up but also use this you know dual purpose just for keeping other jigs and you know crankbaits or whatever that way they're not floating around the bottom of the boat uh, i've attached some little pouches i'm not sure who makes these but they're nice they come with plastic mounting hardware and stainless steel screws it's a good place to keep some of your scents or little effects in there bags of plastic uh, same thing throughout with the silent traction material anywhere where you'd set your paddle down you know try to custom cut some on the hatch that way you're not setting stuff down beating it against the hard plastic uh, just quiet it up quite a bit there let me see I use the crate pack system. I like this. Like I said, I, I bring a lot of stuff. So this this caters to that. I have lots of things and you can put lots of things in that. So I like that. And I've mounted three flush mount rod holders on each side of the back. Um, you know, when you have hard days of fishing and you're going through a lot of presentations, you save a lot of time uh, re-rigging rods, and whatnot if you have you already have them tied up you know you can go through some different applications through that so that's there and the crate pack has three more rod holders so i usually have nine or ten on the boat with me and i carry a little ammunition case actually this is pretty cool this is just you know you can get it at a department store or whatnot but it's got a rubber seal in it and i keep most of my plastics in there try to limit them down to that but I think that's about it. I think it's about it for the, the Ride 135 here.